I feel quite new to Sarasota. So I had the, the TPF community that I've worked with for years already, but I lived in Cape Coral and commuted up to here. And then we got the condo, but still my community was really my work and people at TPF. And so when it was time to do, um, to have the circle, what occurred to me is that I wanted to personally get to know people in the building. And so that's what I kind of went for. And that stepping forward circle had a number of people. One of them, Mary Haber, brought up the idea of um, villages and the concept of the stepping forward circles was that it was really to like take action. Like you have the circle, you read the book, you learn, but then you actually do something and step forward. And so our group decided to step forward and create a village. I had known about the villages concept because I had I lived in Massachusetts and Beacon Hill. So I was familiar with the village concept. Didn't, you know, it was on the radar, but on the horizon, but I didn't spend a lot of time thinking about it. And then um, when I met Mary, which was probably about 30 years ago, she was talking um, at one point, um, she started talking about the DuPont village, DuPont Circle Village. And so I knew about it from her. And that was probably, you know, it couldn't have been 30 years ago, she told me, but at some point she was telling me about it. And then when we came down here, that she had gotten together, she was talking about a woman named Deborah, how they were then talking about starting a village. And then Mary had asked me if I would, I would join them. And I said, well, I don't live in Sarasota. Oh, that was okay. So that's how I heard about it. I became involved not long after the pandemic began. COVID chased me from Washington, D.C. back to Sarasota. And I was looking for an opportunity to engage in the community. And someone said, you should really talk to Deborah Gabro." And so I talked to Deborah, and it was, uh, I jumped in right about the time that, that the concept was shifting from creating a single village to creating a network of villages within the Suncoast region. And of course that broadened and it's now, how do we create a network of villages across Florida? When I understood what a village was and the need, how they could fulfill a need for older adults, that, that just really, struck a chord in me. It was Cynthia. Uh, Cynthia uh, is a friend of ours and she knew that I was uh, retiring and she said, you know, would you be interested in, uh, I, mean, I, well, I probably had even told her at, uh, that, uh, you know, I was looking to uh, find some places to put my, uh, uh, spend my time and certainly, you know, doing, uh, let's say volunteer work or nonprofit work was, uh, was one of those things. And she said, well, you know, we can always use some uh, advice on the financial side of things, you know, modeling, things like that. And I said, well, that's my wheelhouse. That's what I've done for most of my career. So, so anyway, that's how I got started. And I started that probably in about September, October of 21. So probably 18 months or so. I think I first heard about the uplift when we were doing the uh, COVID response, 20, I guess, 2019, whatever that was. And uh, Deborah told me about this idea that she had and was working with a group to create this village concept and uh, see how it might work in Sarasota. And I told her that uh, it sounded kind of interesting, you know, something that was... Uh, you know, kind of a startup and seemed kind of innovative. And I guess fast forward uh, 2020, Deborah sent an email saying that she'd like to talk to me about Uplift. And I think we talked in December uh, and uh, about, you know, kind of helping out a little bit. And so uh, she gave a little more information and that's when I started working with it. I moved here from Washington, D.C., and there were some really active villages um, in, in D.C. One was actually in my neighborhood, and I owned a women's fitness center, and a couple of the women, happen to be seniors, were very active in it. So that's how I heard of it. Um, and then after moving here, you know, I didn't really hear of them again until the whole uplift initiative started. So 
I was happy to see it making its way to Florida. Um, I actually um, was working with Deborah Jacobs a little bit when I was at Habitat um, and in the sense of uh, Patterson uh, initiatives were helping Habitat when I was there. And um, when I left Habitat, Deborah was very gracious and, you know, stayed in touch with me or, you know, connected with me a little bit. And um, I think she may have recommended me, I don't know for sure, to Deborah. And um, we had some initial conversations and then it just kind of bloomed from there. So, uh, so yeah, so I had done, you know, strategic work. I had been working in the area of the community um, and we started to have the conversation and there was, you know, possibility of some fit. And I didn't know where I exactly I would fit, but conceptually, you know, communities for older adults and, and aging in place, I that resonated because of Habitat's work with uh, home repairs and keeping people in homes, you know, because we also had two programs, we had not only building homes, but also repairing homes. So, um, so that was of interest from that perspective. So that's what drew, kind of drew me in. That was uh, the same book group that Deborah talks about, which was the uh, stepping forward uh, book circle that we had back in 2019, I guess. And uh, the deal was at the time, um, I guess TPF would buy everybody that would participate in a book circle to discuss that book, a copy of the book. And so there were, I don't know, 30 or 40 book circles around Sarasota, people that were connected to TPF. And uh, Deborah put one together here in the building. So. Deborah reached out um, to me because, um, you know, obviously through the Age Friendly Initiative, we had worked together and we had actually worked together on um, the, the legacy of valor and um, the other NCOA program. Now we had worked together on that. And she um, uh, reached out to myself and to Chuck to see if I, you know, through my age-friendly work could, you know, be a part of this. I heard about Uplift through reading the Patterson newsletter. And because I've been in the community for a long, for the TPF newsletter, I've been in the community for a long time. And I've had the great opportunity of working with Deborah Gavro, and I saw her name um, attached as a consultant and saw the idea. And it's something that I'm very, very interested in as a model for aging and community. So I made a call to Deborah and asked how I could get involved, um, thinking about my own neighborhood. And so it was really a personal call first to say, uh, you know, where, where, are, where are you? And I think I have a neighborhood that would be appropriate for forming a village. Annette, she had just turned 80 this past year and she was ready to relinquish some of her responsibilities so that she could concentrate on other things. And said, and and she had um, reported to us about first the groups that were meeting, the villages that were meeting, uh, that uh, Deborah was convening, I guess, right? And uh, told me about the Patterson Foundation and Deborah, and um, that they had met, been meeting, and that then Annette got was involved, and she started facilitating some of the meetings. I think she said, anyway. Um, when she was trying to do less, she went, came to our board and said, is anyone interested in being the liaison or whatever it might be with Uplift? So I agreed, I said I would do it because I'm very interested in more villages developing in Florida. That was the big thing. And I've been involved in statewide organizations and national organizations as well as local. So I like the bigger statewide you know, idea and being involved in that. So, um, and because of my belief in the concept and thinking that Florida really needed more villages. They definitely found me because I guess it was through the Village of Village Network, okay. um, just helping them help people who 
were just starting up. Um, you know, I put myself out there that if anybody was just starting up and they had any questions, they could call me. And that's that's how Uplift found me. Connected in Evanston, Illinois, through a person, which is where I live, for the local village. And I heard they were looking to recruit new board members and they knew I had an interest in this area and, and a background. And so I started on my local board and then I was the one raising questions as we were talking about the sustainability of our organization, which at that point was only three years old. And I was raising my hand saying, we can't be the only ones dealing with this problem. What's going on in other parts of the country? And how do we work collaboratively? And that's when I learned about the village to village network. When I that's why I got when when Deborah, when I found out that there was an emerging group come in, in in Sarasota, I got connected to Deborah, and that's when we began talking about a new model, one that starts at a regional level versus at an individual village level. I think the original contact was made with our CEO. Um, so I'm, I'm, I can't speak firsthand, but I, I think we were reached out by um, the Patterson Foundation about becoming a fiscal agent for a startup. Um, so I, I think that's kind of the first exposure that we had uh, to up uplift was if we would be willing to assist as, as like a fiscal sponsor for them. And I think senior friendship centers, because we're both kind of in the aging network, you know, area space, uh, and the fact that we've been in existence, I think this year's our 50th anniversary, we have kind of a very developed, you know, financial structure for that they could then, you know, tap into. Two and a half. I remember it was back when it was still just had formally become Suncoast Villages. And I think I got an email. Deborah Jacob connected me with Deborah Govro to see if there's a possibility that I'd be the right fit to work with it. Barbara and I are cohorts. So she had been uh, aware of the village movement for almost two decades. And she had talked to me. We, we met through uh, League of Women Voters. And she had talked to me about this initiative. And I thought, wow, this is something that would be very, very beneficial. And um, so she didn't have to really sell me on this. Our challenge has been wanting to make sure we have all the steps in place. And that's why we connected with, initially, our contact with, with Uplift was, it was called Florida Network of Villages. And that was Deborah's uh, initiative. And then Suncoast Village. So that's one reason we we got into that to try and gain some knowledge of how we should go about this. So we were fortunate to be a part of the um, development of Uplift. So we watched uh, those fantastic people come together with their ideas and we knew we had to get more people on our boards. I, I knew a little bit about the village concept because of Beacon Hill and my work, you know, obviously with aging, but I, I didn't really have a, a real grasp of it. Was it, was it actual a place? Was it, you know, a concept, you know, sort of, you know, basically what was it? Cause you know, Beacon Hill is, you know, you see a lot of the buildings and things. So I, I just had to really get in and learn a little bit more, did a lot of, obviously a lot of research, but um, as I say frequently, when we talk about the whole village concept, there's a lot of similarity. There's a lot of crossover. Um, there's a lot of, to me, easy dovetailing with age-friendly initiative, because it's about, you know, aging in place, aging in community, you know, preparing for um, aging in place. So a, a lot of the tenants are the same, you know, safe housing, access to medical care and resources, you know, transportation opportunities, social engagement, um, you know, inclusion in being part of your community. 
uh, whether it's through working or volunteering. So there's there's a lot that goes together with the H Friendly Initiative. That's really why I was interested in becoming a part of it. So no, but I, I like the idea. I mean, I really buy into the mission, you know, and I and I love the idea. My mother um, um, uh, started to uh, uh, have uh, started to have some real cognitive. Uh, decline and uh, but but just desperately wanted to stay at home and so we had to you know scramble the jets because my sister and I didn't live anywhere near her uh, and, and there was a lot of denial you know denial on the part of her friends and uh, and her sister who lived nearby and others you know that she even had a problem in any case what I saw was that you know, part of the mission here with Uplift is to help people, you know, maintain high quality of life and stay in their homes as long as possible. And that really resonated with me. And so for that reason, I felt, you know, I, I felt, uh, you know, this was something that uh, I really, I really could buy into. I like the idea of it being a startup as well. I mean, just because, uh, you know, that's kind of cool being on the ground floor of something, you know, now we, we've got to move beyond that, which has not been easy, <laughs> put it mildly, but, uh, but, you know, but the thing is, is that, you know, I think there's a, there's a ton of, if we don't do it, someone else will. So, I mean, it's a, it's really a question of uh, not when, but if and who. I think that the idea of um, using volunteers and trying to, you uh, connect people that needed assistance and the idea of neighbor helping neighbor. And um, I guess in a sense, it's, it's sort of new and I kind of like to get in with things that are new, you know, kind of help them get started and work of endeavor. We, we had a good time working together, you know, back in aspirations to action and then the, our attempt to do the COVID. <laughs> Uh, so it's always kind of fun to work with her. So, you know, probably sum it up uh, the innovative part of it, uh, neighbor to neighbor helping each other out and knowing that we have to have new ways of doing things when you got limited resources. Uh, when I said I would be the kind of liaison with Uplift, um, I did that because of my strong support of the village movement and my desire to increase the number of villages in Florida. The biggest thing was the desire, the, the um, goal of uplift to increase the number of villages in Florida was the first one. Um, so that possibility that uplift could help increase the number of villages in Florida. Also possibly decrease the time it takes to start a village, which I thought would be great. Provide networking opportunities for Florida villages that Uplook could provide a vehicle through, village, through which villages can decrease administrative costs, increase, increase strategic partnerships for the village movement in Florida and for individual villages, and also at the possibility of being able to advocate on the state level for funding for village development and operations. So those were all the things that, that's, those are the things that resonate with me about Uplook. I got involved when Deborah told me about the village concept, and that led to a meeting with Deborah and a meal. I think I understood it from the initial contact, and I thought it was a good idea because I think that people need to be connected to community. And I think isolation and aloneness and um, disconnection from society is toxic. And I think it, it does not bode well for people to be disconnected from community. It was the idea that um, a village could connect people and keep them socially engaged with community. You know, so many people are in the aging space doing similar things, yet there are still gaps that exist. So although it can be easy to see that Uplift is getting into a market where there are already so many players and competition can come to mind, there are there's so many older adults here that one organization, two, three, can't serve all of them. So naturally there are gaps that exist. There are people that are being turned away. 
but Uplift has that ability to support the creation of villages that can help bridge the gaps that that exist or perhaps serve those who are you know not at the place to go to a nursing room or to go to a facility but they're still at home and they're still having challenges if if nothing less they just need someone to talk to like a nursing home isn't some place people go to have a conversation or to socialization but the idea of bringing the connection even as something as simple as a phone call to people and bridging those gaps i like that it resonates with me it's i was gonna say it's just a lifelong it's just a lifelong love. When I was in, um, let's see, high school, before I could even get a job, I volunteered at a Catholic nursing home. And in those days, we could help dress people and feed them and, you know, comb their hair and just help them feel better. And we weren't even allowed to wear slacks at, when you did your volunteer work. We had to wear skirts and blouses and all that kind of stuff. But I loved it. Um, and then, you know, I started working when I was in high school, I got, then I got a job at a nursing home working in the nutrition department and, you know, I, I just loved it. And I always had a close relationship with my grandparents and, um, it just sort of was like, people have a calling to something. It's just, you know, and my grandparents were like amazing and active. My, my grandmother went you know, out with the sled and with us when she was, you know, in her 70s. So I never, um, I, you know, we talk about the ageism and seeing people as not capable. I never viewed my grandparents as not just being active and capable. And I mean, I know as they got older, they had health issues, but um, I just never viewed them as less because they were older, like a lot of, like a lot of people do. You know, I, I think I think what they're trying to do is they're they're trying to connect into the community. You know, they're trying to make the community a better place. And, and I think that's one of the things that kind of resonated with senior friendship centers is we're we're trying to do the same thing. Like that's what kind of resonated with us about them of why we were kind of like, oh, okay, this is interesting. And and I, I think the other part was just the humble beginning part. I mean, Senior Friendship Centers is 50, 50 years old. You know, we were started back in the 70s. I've been with them 25 of those 50 years. Um, and certainly I had a little look back into the history of what things used to be like at Senior Friendship Centers. And it's hard. It's hard building something and getting traction and, and getting things going with it. So I think that was one of the things that kind of sparked our interest was trying to help a fellow nonprofit and, and certainly a fellow nonprofit that was looking to do something in the aging network, you know, because the more of us there are, the better, you know, I mean, it, having another player out there is, is good for everybody. Something to make the community better is better for all of us. 